is episode 178, and I hope all of you are safe and well. It's a gorgeous day outside here today in Pennsylvania. Um, the sun is shining, but it's very windy out. Um, they actually were out mowing our lawn today. We live in a condo, so they actually take care of our yard work. And, uh, yeah, they were out mowing. I guess it's officially spring. Uh, yeah, so anyway, our... Our county itself only has, I believe at last check, like as of yesterday, eight cases of the virus. Um, but our, like the county next to us where my parents live has like over 90. The closer you get to the cities, like to Philly and to Pittsburgh, um, the more the cases are increasing. So as a result, our state is on lockdown at this point, which means we can't go out unless it's for food or medical or to care for a senior parent or something like that. So, um, yeah, and I haven't had cabin fever yet. I honestly haven't because I've got a lot going on. And starting next week, I'm going to be doing a little bit more telecommuting with my work. So that will keep me busy and if you've been watching my vlogs you'll see that i've been actually filming some videos for my work as well so uh, they're trying to put things out so that there's like children's story times and not just our library but a lot of libraries are doing this uh, children's story times and i'm actually doing a um, knitting tutorial course which i will talk about a little bit later so let's get started with our finished objects the one thing I have noticed with this whole thing with the lockdown, I haven't gotten calls but a couple of times from telemarketers. I don't know about you all, but I haven't missed. That's one thing I have been enjoyed out of this whole thing is no telemarketers. I think I've maybe gotten one. So, yeah, that's that's like the only positive. But anyway, let's get started with my finished objects. The first one is not knit or crochet related. I made a mask. It's probably going to blow out the camera because it's it's light. But um, yeah. And it has like three pleats along the front. This is a pattern. It is free on um, it's free on YouTube. They have a tutorial. It is called Deaconess.com, I think. My um, supervisor is making like huge amounts of these. I think she's made over 300. You'll see them in the show and tell, but she's made over 300 of them. And she's the one that told me about this pattern. So I've been making them. Now I made nowhere near that amount because my sewing machine and I have a love-hate relationship, which I will also talk about later on. And um, I ran out of elastic. In fact, the elastic on this is actually yellowed because it's like probably vintage elastic. I checked it actually before I used it to make sure it still had like elasticity in it, that it wasn't dry rotted. Um, but anyway, I, I made 19 of them before I ran out of the elastic. And this particular fabric is actually a little thinner than the others that I made. But... Um, what I did with them is I stuck a note on the side of my house that said free masks and I stuck them in a bag and hung them on my front doorknob. And then I sent an email to my, um, to my neighborhood and told them that they were there for the taking to help themselves. So, um, almost all of them went, I have a, I have like four left. So, um, yeah. So anyway, that's, that's the one bunch of things I've been making. And then, like I said, I've been doing a tutorial for my work. Um, they asked if I would do some videos on how to knit. So I actually chose one of my patterns that is free. It's available over on Lovecrafts. And this is the pattern I chose. This is mitered lace dishcloth. And then I did two uh, tutorials that are connected to this. So. Um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. So I filmed those this week as well. So they're all set and ready to go once they get all the technical stuff worked out so that they can upload the videos over to the Facebook page. So I filmed two of those and got all the editing done. And so in the course of that, of course, I had to make one as I was doing the tutorial. So I have a finished lace 
mitered lace dishcloth. They're very easy to make, and if you have not knitted before, um, they're like the easy, the, a really good pattern to start with because it's just, it teaches you like four different stitches, and with those four different stitches, you can do lots of things. Um, this is made with Doris cotton, however, um, most of the time I've got Lily sugar and cream, but this, what I had in the house was Doris cotton, and it's a worsted weight, so... I made a whole bunch of dishcloths about a year or so ago. The one thing I have noticed with some of the um, like variegated colors that go with the Lily Sugar and Cream is they fade out. My dishcloths were all like yellow and blue variegated. They kind of look gray now. They just the the color just totally washed out of them over over about a year so I think if I make a bunch in the future it's going to be with a solid color maybe I'm hoping that wouldn't fade out as much I'm interested to see how this one holds up because it's a different cotton it's a different company to see whether it doesn't wash out like the other ones did but that's my knitted finished object And then if you watched my vlog, if you missed it and you wanted to see my vlog for the last two weeks, I'll just click the little eye over here and that will take you over to it. I'm um, just kind of showing what I've been doing the last two weeks since I've been off work. But one of the things I did, and it was shown on the vlog, was I have this poncho. It is the Pladaptation Poncho. It was a pattern and yarn that I got from Blueprint, which was at that time called Craftsy. But I found that the neckline, maybe I have a fat neck. I don't know, probably, but we won't, we won't go there. Um, I am, the neckline was just too, it was just too tight for me. I don't like it like right up against my neck because with the weight of the poncho, it was just really pulling. And so I bought more of the yarn as I showed you the other week. And so I've enlarged it. So now this fits the way I want it to fit. I added probably six, I'd say between six and eight inches. Um, I did have to take it apart. I'd really hoped that I wouldn't have to. It's, it's two rectangle pieces. So I did have to take the buttons off and add to each side and then sew it back together, put the buttons back on. It was no big deal to do that. It really isn't because these, these buttons are just for looks. There's no buttonholes under them. It's just to dress it up a little bit. So I am going to insert a little clip of me modeling this so you can kind of see where it falls on my neck now. So you can see the neckline comes down really nice now. And I don't know if I can back up far enough. I can't back up far enough. But the sleeves come all the way down. Well, not the sleeves, but the sides come all the way down a little bit further, which, oops, which they, they didn't before. And... The point is actually down to about my knees. I can't back up far enough in my room, but the point is right about to my knees. So I like that too. And so this is the plaid adaptation. So my work's in progress. This gets a little funny. It's been a crazy week with my work's in progress. First, we have my knitting design for my the yarn advent calendar. I love what's coming out of this. But I'm going to rip the whole thing out and I'll explain why. Here is how far I've gotten. This section down here is what I did this week. It's like little shell design. Like, yeah, right in here, the pink is little shell designs. And I like the way it looks. But one thing I just didn't think about when I started designing this. This is a shawl that is going to be wider than it is deep. So it's doing four increases, two on each side of the center with every other row. As you can see, it's moving out pretty well. My yarn advent calendar are in only 10 gram balls, which looks great here, looks fine here, but see how narrow it's narrowing down to? I'm afraid by the time I would get down to the 24th, as this is getting wider, my rows are going to get narrower. I might not even be able to get all the way across. I'm already at like 150 stitches here. Uh, so, yeah. So this, I'm not throwing the pattern out. 
because I do like the pattern I've come up with. It's a combination of, um, I haven't finished yet, but it's got a combination of six different um, different patterns that will then get repeated three times. So I, I like the way it looks, but I'm going to tear the advent calendar out and instead of having something that's going to enlarge, I want the sections to be relatively the same. So I'm going to make an infinity scarf out of it instead, and I'm going to base it on some of these same patterns, but that way it'll stay a consistent width and length all the way around. So, um, yeah, because I'm afraid I seriously would end up with just single stripes at the bottom, and that's not quite the look I was going for. So, um, anyway, there it is. Take a look at it quick, because it's going to go away this, right after I finish filming. So, I am going to, like I said, use this pattern again, but I'll show you what I'm going to use it with. I bought these on our Christmas shopping spree. I got this at Flying Fibers. It's going to go together with these. So, there's this, which is a Hedgehog Fibers. It's blue-faced blue Lister, and the color is called Ozone, and it is pinks and blues. It's like baby pink, baby blue, and it's got white in it, and then it has some other speckles. There's the speckles. So it's going with that, and then I have two solids, which are uh, both um, Brooklyn Tweed. This is a fingering weight, which is what the shawl was in. And this is, um, is that my color? This is called hammock, and this is called peony. So that's going to go with this. So that's what that pattern, when I remake it, is going to be made into. Then we come to my crochet. Well, it, it didn't turn into a disaster, but it very well could have. I was crocheting away on my little scrappy blanket that's like getting really big now. I've, I've done like 12 rows this week. Uh, so I've gotten quite a bit done. You can see the marker right here where I was last week. And I've gone up 12 rows. I was crocheting along, and all of a sudden, in the crack of the sofa, I felt something. I stuck my hand down inside it and pulled out the crochet hook. Then I looked at the crochet hook that was in my hand I was crocheting with and realized I've been crocheting with the wrong hook. And for who knows how long. Um, if you remember the crocheted socks I showed a couple weeks ago, that was the hook that went to that and apparently at some point in time I got them mixed up and I actually had to go back and look at a video from a couple weeks ago when I showed the hook I was using with the blanket just to be able to realize that yes I truly have been crocheting with the wrong blank or the wrong uh, crochet hook for who knows how long um, I didn't notice any difference a whole lot because I really looked along the sides here I was like well if there's a real big decrease it's going to show here. It doesn't. It's as straight as can be. So I'm not overly worried. I'm not going to go back and rip back stitches because I really wouldn't know how far back to rip. So um, yeah. Anyway, that's where we're at. But I am on a new ball of Magic Knot. And when I say Magic Knot, it's just a whole bunch of scrap yarn and I tied it together. So um, there it is. I've got one more ball left, which should be just perfect. Because I measured this thing, it is 39 inches wide, and at this point it's 31 inches tall. So um, I want it to be rectangular, so I figure by the time I go through this ball of yarn and the last one I have left, I should be good. Um, and this little thing I'm holding my yarn in, I just, what I've find a lot of times is I just stick the yarn in this if this was a gift bag but it's fabric I just dump the the ball of yarn in it hang it over my wrist and that way it doesn't go rolling around on the floor and it's not like 
rolling off the table or anything and it just hangs on my wrist and I just crochet from there. So that is my scrappy blanket and I have one more project I want to start because um, the knitting yarn advent thing, whatever it turns into be, um, infinity scarfy thing is, um, it's very intense as far as I've got to be writing every single row and there's a lot of math involved with figuring out some of the stitches and how they're going to work. So I need something to relax and like I said last week my crochet blanket has been my my little comfort food basically. So I wanted to have something like that in knit too because I can only crochet so long and then my tendonitis flares up. Um, knitting it doesn't bother but crochet it does I guess because of the rotating with the wrist or whatever it flares my tendonitis up here. So I wanted to have an easy knitting pattern to work on. So a few years ago, I made the Find Your Fade. And here is a picture of it. It's by Andrea Mowry. Now when I made it, I made it with um, the wrong size yarn. I decided, I didn't realize how big the thing was going to be. And let me see, what does it call for yarn wise? It called for fingering weight yarn. I actually was using, um, oh, what size? Like a, almost a DK weight between a sport and a DK, closer to a DK weight yarn. Um, it was huge. I mean, this is a big shawl anyway. It uses 1,540 yards. And you can see in this picture, how big it is. Oops, so, see if I can get the light to focus. There we go. You can see how long. This is like hanging down below her knees. It looked absolutely absurd on me. And with it being a heavier weight yarn, I tried wrapping it around my neck. I could have mummified myself in it. I mean, it's, it's a huge, huge shawl. Here's what it looks like stretched out in a picture. It's almost like a kind of a boomerang shape. It has a unique shape to it. Let me see if I can show it to you. Yes, here we go. I'm going to cover the pattern part. But that's the shape of it. It's not a it's an asymmetrical shawl. But it kind of reminds me of a paper airplane. But anyway, um it ended up huge. It was literally 8 feet long. Didn't work out. I ripped the whole thing apart. And if you remember the um, crow fade, the very first one that I made and I gave to my mother for her, for her birthday, that is the yarn that was used for the original one of the Find Your Fades. That was some of the yarn that was used in it. So it was like turquoises and stuff, but it was just too heavy for that particular pattern. So it's an easy, easy knit. So I thought, well, I'm going to remake it in the yarn weight it was supposed to be made in. Actually, I'm going down to a lace weight, so I'm going to go down even smaller needles, so hopefully I don't end up with something absolutely huge again. So it calls for seven balls of yarn to make this pattern. Some of them you don't use as much, some of them you use more. So I will show you what I'm going to do with it. I'm using two little hedgehog minis that I got quite a few years ago on a vacation. So it's like a charcoal gray and then there's this white and pink and like a fluorescent pink and it has little flecks of black in it. So that's why I thought this kind of gray would go with it nice. And then I've got a plain pink. My color, my camera's getting blown out something crazy today. So I'll hold them back here and hopefully it's just dark in here today for it being sunny. I don't know if that's going to help a whole lot either. So we have this and then I have another pink here. And then I have a darker gray. Let's see, that's five, six, and seven. So it's all variations of 
gray, pinks, and a black. So that's what I'm hoping to do with it. We'll see how this works out. Hopefully I don't end up being able to mummify myself again. Now it's time for our show and tell segment and to see what you all have been making. I've been up to this week besides what you've seen on the vlogs um there is a recipe on the the latest vlog for stuffed pepper stew if you want to try it out so um yeah that's out there i had to laugh i was watching sarah oliver's um 
vlog. She's doing one every day during, she lives in Scotland, and she's doing one for every day that they're on shutdown as well. And um, she went to the grocery store the other day, and she was showing how the shelves were empty. But she said, the funny thing is, the things that are missing that are empty are the crisps, which we would call potato chips, uh, chocolate, and sweets. And I'm sitting there watching it going, uh... Dave and I went to the store today, and we got chocolate and potato chips and sweets. I told her, I said, that would be me. I'm one of those people that went and got junk that we didn't need to eat. We have, we have enough groceries at this point, but we ran out of things to kind of nibble on or whatever. And uh, Dave and I like to have something to nibble on while we're playing our ongoing game of rummy tiles. So, um, yeah, we went to, we, we were out, we had to drop something out drop something off to somebody before the shutdown took place in our community. And so we stopped at a store while we were out. And sure enough, yes, I bought the same thing she said they were out of in Scotland. Guilty as charged. Yeah. Anyway, I had to write her and tell her what I'd done. I was like, I would be one of those people. So, um, yeah, we had a good laugh over that one. No calories, I'm sure, in what we bought. <laughs> yeah, I've also been buying things. It's pretty bad when you get, like, on the computer entirely too much. Yes, I bought a, I bought a ring. Um, I mean, it don't get excited. It's not an expensive ring. It's just some costume jewelry. And um, I'll show it to you when it comes in. And I, I am going to go online and buy another sewing machine. After fighting with my sewing machine with making these masks, I realized it's time to invest in another sewing machine. The one I currently have was given to me by my brother as a thank you for babysitting his son. Uh, my sister-in-law at the time um, was going back to college to take some courses, and so I offered to babysit my nephew for, you know, that semester, and I course, didn't charge him anything. It's my nephew. Um, so as a result, they surprised me by giving me a sewing machine. And it's a Kenmore, which was made by Sears. My nephew is now 32 years old, I believe. Yeah, so it's it's almost approaching vintage quality, or yeah, of the of the sewing machine. But things on it are not working well anymore. And I have tried and tried. The tension is what I'm struggling with the worst. Uh, the, the underside of the sewing looks fine, but the top of it just, it just doesn't look right. And I've tried using the instruction book and it's just the, the, even the troubleshooting guide isn't fixing the problem. Sears doesn't make sewing machines by Kenmore anymore, so I can't even like get the parts for it. Some stuff has rusted. It fell at one point and the, the cover that covers over the gear thing broke and um, the little feet thingy that moves, I have no idea what the name of it is. I'm using technical terms. Feet thingy that goes underneath the needle that kind of makes the, the material move forward doesn't always work the greatest. It doesn't come up high enough to move the fabric through. So sometimes I end up kind of pulling the fabric through. And yeah, after much frustration and it nodding and squealing and making weird noises at me, I decided I needed to break down and buy another one. So I'm going to be doing that this afternoon. Not getting an expensive one. I'm not a big sewer, but I do sew. And, um, you know, I don't do fancy things like the quilt that my mother made. That's that machine that she does that's on a Bernina is a Bernina. And they're several thousand dollars. Um, no, I'm looking for one under a hundred dollars. One that just does if it does zigzag buttonholes and a straight stitch that's all I care about because that's about as much as I do on a sewing machine so yeah I'm going to be getting that I also did a little shopping at Annie's um, I bought some yarn which has not come in yet but when it does I will um, show it to you and um, but I also bought a pattern and this one is I could make longer sleeves and make this a long sleeve sweater, but it's like a T. I like the, the short sleeves. I might make the sleeves a little bit longer than that to hide my bat wings because I don't have skinny little arms like that. But I like the length of it right here. 
and it just it just looks like a nice summer cotton tee. So um, yeah, I'm excited to get something started with that. I have to look through my stash and see what I'm going to make it with. I have plenty to choose from. So um, yeah, I need to do that. But I just saw that pattern and really liked that. And it's called the Camisol. I think that's Chamisol or Camisol tea. I would tend to say Camisol. I could be totally messing that up. But it's a design by Lena Scavi. Spenderson? Spenderson. I'll write it down here. And uh, yeah, so anyway, excited to start on that one. And I've also been spending some time doing some reading. This is a book I got out before the library closed, so I still have it. So this has been my bathtub reading. I love to sit in the tub and soak till I get properly. I told my husband I have to soak till I get properly pruny. Till my fingers get all wrinkly, you know, properly pruny. So uh, I'll sit there. And I've been reading this. This is Deadly, Silent Night, Deadly Knit. Silent Knit, Deadly Knit. It's by Peggy Earhart. And, um, yeah, it's a cozy mystery with knitting. It's fun. It's, you know, it's not gory or anything. No bad language. No, no detailed scenes, if you know what I mean. So that's the type of book I like. Just a nice, easy read to entertain my mind. And um, speaking of which, not entertaining my mind, but reading. Um, well, I guess it's a little of both. But anyway, <laughs> if you are, if you like to read and you're running out of stuff because most libraries are closed, if you check out your library's main page, a lot of times they offer digital libraries. Uh, so you can actually, as long as you have your barcode from your from your library card number, you can actually go online and download them to your computer and read them off of your computer or download them onto other devices like e-readers or your phone or whatever. So you can still read and they they return themselves automatically whenever the due date is. So um, yeah, there are digital libraries and most libraries are carrying those now. So it's an option. You can also download um, audiobooks that way too, which is really kind of neat. So uh, if you like to listen to something, I love being read too, but if you listen to something while you're knitting or crocheting, it's a possibility too. Just throwing that out there for you guys. And then the other thing I've been doing, like I said, I've been, I've been doing, I've had a couple of Zoom meetings um, with my coworkers and I'm going to be starting to do some telecommuting and I've been making these videos uh, for my work, which is so funny because you all know me because I've been, you know, you've been watching me for a while. I'm not a real serious person, but I'm having to act mature for these videos and act serious. It's really hard. I have to act like an adult and, you know, my maturity level really isn't there most of the time. So, um, yeah, that's been hard. Not letting my kind of quirky sense of humor like ooze out every time every so often I have to look professional so yeah so if you see these videos and I am going to hopefully post the uh, tutorial for the dishcloth uh, not this Wednesday but next Wednesday and uh, the you'll see that the, it's a little bit different than my the contents a little different the way it's Sorry, they are mowing right outside my window. I have a window off to the side here, and they were mowing right beside the house. Um, yeah, but you'll... Here they come again. Timing is everything. Yeah, so anyway, you will notice that the content looks a little different, and I seem a little bit more serious than I normally do. Um, I'm pretending to be from <laughs> our yards aren't that wide. They're going back and forth and back and forth. Sorry about this. I had to pick the one day they come to mow my lawn. Yeah. So anyway, I had to pretend to be professional on this. So, um, yeah.
Sorry, I finally had to stop the video until they were done mowing because every time I'd start to talk, they'd come through again. So um, it's funny because there's really not that much space between our house and the house next door. It's maybe, I don't know, 25, 30 feet. Oh, well. <laughs> so it's now time for... Now, in our Come and Get It section today, I am only going to name ones that I know that at the time of filming are still open and shipping. Uh, for instance, the dollar store is not shipping things right now because they're concentrating on what people are just buying in the stores. So we'll start with Leisure Arts. They have a couple of patterns that I thought were really pretty. Uh, one of them is called Wraps and Ponchos to Knit. It's five patterns. It's only $2.52. Really cheap. So that is wraps and ponchos to knit. Then in their crochet section, they have, it's called just simply crochet ponchos. And it is six patterns. And it is $7.99. Now I do believe these are downloadable patterns. Um, so yeah, $7.99. The nice thing with downloadable patterns is you're not paying for shipping and you get the pattern immediately. So um, yeah, this is the, the pattern I showed you from Annie's. This is a downloadable pattern. So they just download it to your library that's on, you know, on their website that you've signed up for and you just download it from there and print it out and you're ready to go. Create for less. I actually looked up a couple of pattern books. I didn't realize there was pattern books on there. Um, so I went and checked out a couple. They actually sell some of Annie's crafting store or Annie's, yeah, Annie's craft store. They actually sell some of their stuff. So I saw this one. It's kind of neat. It's called Annie's. It's, well, it's by Annie's. Make it tonight kitchen trio. And there is four different, um, like setting four different groupings, I guess you would call it, of a pot holder, an edging pattern to put on a dish towel, a dish and a dish cloth. And there's four of those. So it's basically 12 patterns. And it is 639. So here's what it looks like. And then they also have and and those are crochet. I didn't say that. Those are crocheted. But in their knitting section, they have Easy Knitting Chic. And it's $11.99. I didn't check to see how many patterns are in that one. So um, anyway, Easy Knitting Chic. If you hear squeaking, that is my siding that they fixed the other, the other week, and it has broke loose yet again. They've got to come back and fix it. But because so many places are closed, nobody's been by to fix it. So our, our siding outside the house is kind of like waving at everybody as they pass by. Some of our neighbors have said, did you know your siding's loose? And was like, yeah, we know that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just waving to our neighbors as they walk by. Um, Consumer Crafts has, of course, their regular thing of sugar and cream. Um, just get solids, just from what I've run across with the fading. Um, they have it for $1.97. They have lots and lots of colors to choose from. I mean, it's, if it's not something that's going to get washed all the time, like a dishcloth, you might not have as big a problem. But just what I used, I found that they've turned gray. Dear, that and my dishes are extremely dirty. I don't know. Anyway, $1.97 for sugar and cream. Annie's, if you go, those of you who like to do the C2C with the designs in them, they just came out with a new one. It's called the C2C Dragonfly. And the pattern is $5 for that. And then in their knitting section, they have the Moonstone Poncho is, brand, is a brand new pattern. And the downloadable pattern is $5.99, and the um, printed pattern for it, I guess if you had it mailed to you or whatever, it's $8.99. So here's a picture of it. Lion Brand is not having any huge sales this week that I'm seeing so far, but I will let you know if more comes through. You know I post little videos for, for Lion Brand on a regular basis lately, it seems like. But they are in their clearance section. They do have, and this I think is pretty much all the time, they have mandala 
um, the cakes of Mandala, three of them for $10. Now, I will say, because I've ordered this before, um, they are mill ends, so when you get them, they don't have the ball band on them, so you have to kind of, and they're not all the same, so you're not going to get like three balls of the same. You don't get any choice. They send them to you, and it's usually, like what I got was three separate um, colors, um, but I mean, it was perfect. I mean, it worked great. I gave one to my daughter, one to, or one to my granddaughter, one to my other granddaughter, because she, they both of them loom knit. And then I gave one to my daughter-in-law who was learning to crochet. So, um, you know, I mean, it's still a good deal. You're paying $3 for, you know, a ball of mandala yarn. And it's a full skein. I mean, if it's not, it's pretty close. I mean, it's just looking at the size, but I didn't weigh it and everything, but it seems to be pretty close to the real size. Uh, so anyway, that is what I saw at Lion Brand at this point. Blueprint has been really, really cool lately. Um, if you haven't checked it out, they got free classes right now up until February or up until April 9th. Although when I went to their website, it said April 16th. So I don't know if they've extended it or not, but what it is, Blueprint offers classes, um, under their, like a video course thing. You, if you wanted to pay for it, it's like, I think $39.99 a year for unlimited courses. But right now, because they know everybody's kind of stuck at home, they've got all kinds of free classes. Everything is free to look at, all of their video stuff. So I've been binge watching basic sewing, trying to figure out what's wrong with my sewing machine. I have watched brioche knitting. I have watched a crochet on granny squares. I watched, just because I was hungry, I watched, <laughs> I watched a, a somebody making croissants, <laughs> which are like my favorite. But anyway, um, yeah, no calories in watching, but then it just makes me hungry for croissants, which I don't have. So, um, yeah, I've been kind of watching that a lot. Like I said, take advantage of it while it's there. It's free. And there's all kinds of sewing stuff. I was watching one on somebody making a, um, if you're into quilting, they've got quilting, they've got sewing, cooking, um, they got some kids material, like if you're doing crafts for children, crochet, knit. And I mean, it's like a whole series. So it's not like there's like one video for knit, one video for crochet. No, there's like tons to choose from. You hit knitting or you hit crochet and there's like hundreds of stuff to look at. And it's all free right now. So go over to Blueprint and check it out. And the links to everything I'm sharing are down in the description box down here. And like I said, if you like Blueprint and you decide you want to continue with the unlimited use of the class, you can subscribe. When you go over to their site, though, to watch, just a little warning ahead of time, because I, I want to make sure you guys don't subscribe accidentally. Um, when you go over, you don't have to sign up or do anything. I didn't have to. I think you maybe have to create an account with them, which is free. But other than that, you don't have to do anything. You just click to watch the classes. Whatever you do, though, do not click subscribe. Because if you click subscribe, you're signing up for the one-year program. I clicked on it by accident. And, I mean, I stopped because I realized it was going to ask for my credit card. And it was going to want, you know, the $39.99 and all that kind of thing. So, um, you know, just be careful you don't click subscribe by accident. When you click on a video, it'll show you a preview of what you're going to have. Uh, in the class, and if you want to watch, if you decide you still want to go through and watch it, right in the bottom right hand corner below the video, that's where it says watch now, and you click watch now and it takes you right to the full program. But if you want to look at a preview ahead of time to see what they're going to teach and if it's something that would be of interest to you, you can do that. So, um, yeah, like I said, free. How can you go wrong? So, I've been doing that. And We Crochet and Knit Picks, which are the same company. One just is more crochet oriented. The other one's knit oriented. Uh, they are offering, uh, they're back up and running. They were closed for a week or so, um, I guess, trying to get everything caught up and rethink how they were going to do things so that it was still safe for their employees and everything. But they are back up and running. They will begin shipping items on April 6th. So if you do order from them, just be aware that it won't ship until April 6th. So, you know, it's like four. I'm filming this on Thursday the 2nd. So it'll take, you're going to watch it maybe on the 4th. 
So they won't be starting till like that um, Monday, till next Monday when they start shipping things out. But they are offering their yarn of the month is the Shine brand yarn. And they're also offering 15% off site-wide. You do need to use a coupon code cuddle up to get that 15% off. So if you want to get that, you would do that, I think, in your in your checkout area, I think is where you sign up for the you put cuddle up and get 15% off your order. So that is the sales for this week. Now, Wednesday's video, I have not filmed it yet. I'm hoping to get it done for Wednesday. And that will be a fashion show. Yes, I know that's a little strange, but I'm cleaning out my closet and I'm reorganizing because it kind of looks like my shawls and knit and crochet wear kind of got into a fight and there's a big tangle up of mess. And so since I'm on a cleaning spree, I figured it would be a great time to reorganize that. So while I'm reorganizing it, I will show you all of my knit and crochet wear that I have. And um, yeah, so thought that'd be kind of fun just to show. And I'll tell you what the patterns are as I go through them, if I know. Um, most of them, I know what the patterns are. So I'll tell you what the patterns are as I go along. So that'll be Wednesday's video. And then next Thursday, of course, I will be running another vlog. It's kind of fun to be able to document what's going on during this whole time, because this is something none of us have really experienced. We haven't had this happen since like the 1917 or 1918 influenza. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of a, it's a unique time in history. So I just thought I would do vlogs and, um, yeah, so that'll be on Thursday and that is it for this week. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to check out Wednesday and Thursday's videos. Stay safe guys.